So starting off on the fourth year of your renovation project, it kind of felt a little bit like starting a diesel engine. That's a process. You put the key in the lock, you turn it. After some time, you start the engine. Then you let the engine warm up. And only when it's warm enough, do you put it in first gear. I guess I started off the year a little bit like that.
managed to put all the conduits always the same system at a certain point it's nice because you know how much where and what you have to put connections to the outside for the electricity and now and close all the walls plaster the walls i have a friend helping me out for uh, i think another couple of days and then it, everything will be done here the next thing that i have to make sure that happens in the ASAP the floors but since we are almost done here we can also do this one including the top floors so that's like uh, 140 150 square meters we're calling they didn't have time before Christmas but they say that maybe in the upcoming week next week maybe and for that I have to clean everything here make sure this is done clean the whole room I have all the wood lying around still, clean upstairs. Now all of this didn't just happen over time. I made all kind of uh, designs for the bathrooms, etc. I already ordered all the tiles, even all the radiators. Uh, once I knew how many radiators I needed, uh, that was somewhere beginning of last year. Basically you put out the word and uh, you wait for a good offer. Finally I got uh, two or three offers and uh, uh, the only provision that I had myself is that I, I don't have any storage space. So uh, eventually I bought all the radiators uh, from someone who uh, could keep them in storage until needed. From the preliminary designs Eventually, uh, some things changed. You know, you have to adapt to the circumstances. This bathroom, I only have to decide whether I'm going to plaster a piece or not. Because for most of the bathrooms, I will tile the walls until two meters, and then the rest I will put some plaster and uh, some varnish, some paint. And this one, I think, is going to be a little bit different. So I don't have to plaster more than this. This this is the, I can put the tiles directly on this one. So all the components from the bath for the bathroom, I ordered them like a year ago. So that's all done. No, not a year ago, in the summer. During the summer I ordered them. It's done, it's paid for and it's stored. So when everything is finished, that, that things that I don't have to think about anymore. Of course, uh, since I have uh, five apartments, uh, I'm going. I have ordered. Everything is going to be the same. So uh, you know, you have uh, five be there, five toilets. The sinks are a little bit different because every bathroom has different uh, sizes. But the model itself is practically the same model everywhere. So this part is also done, just have to finish that little corner and then we can wait, let it dry a little bit, maybe next week can put the final coat of plaster, the same for this part and then we have to do some plastering, the final coat on the other side but that's not too much work, well and then we're done. Wow, it's starting to get somewhere, you know. So I think uh, one more day, finish that corner. That's then done. That's just going to be... <sighs> These two weeks are all about organizing. I have to get out all my project management skills and get everything going so I can have a good start of the new year. In the 
yes, I finally got some good news because next week they're gonna come to put the floor and uh, I think that uh, there are a number of jobs where you have to think about okay what happens when I do it myself I remember that I I did that uh, terrace outside which is about six by three and a half so it's like uh, 18 square meters and uh, the cement it's ready-made it's lightweight but those bags, and I had 125 bags, those bags they go around 8 or 9 euro plus the labor. It's just not worth it to do 150 uh, square meters of floor yourself. Uh, so uh, there are these guys specialized. They come one day and now that uh, basically we, we did all this work downstairs, I can have them do the top floor and this apartment which is 150 square meters in one day they have a nice big machine that makes the cement and then there is like a tube 60 meters so we can set up the installation outside and with the tube go inside the building and then spray it over all the floors being able to do everything in one day, including the material, I think for 150 square meters, it's not more than 3000 euro. There's another thing to consider when you put your final floor, you know, after you want to tile the floor or you want to put parquet floor, uh, wooden floors or even laminato, doesn't matter. But if your floor is not straight, you have to compensate afterwards. So that was the only floor we did ourselves. But again, if you consider the cost of the material plus the labor, and that was just four square meters, maybe not even. And then you consider that you have all these floors to do. Unimaginable, really. Now to have the floors done, then this coming weekend, I have to clean out everything. So tomorrow I'll get the supplier coming for uh, the paint. But of course I have to put uh, the first coat, Fisativo, I don't know in English, but I put the first coat, I can put the first coat, then I have the a bucket of white paint. I thought I was going, that was going to be the uh, final color, but I changed my mind. So I'm going to use that bucket to put the first coat on all the walls. And then um, I'm going to think about the final color because I don't really like this strong white. I thought it was nice. It's not bad. Basically it's taste. What do you like, what you don't like. But I would like to go a little bit more towards the color of the, the grout that is in. Mm -hmm. So probably a little bit more something beige. Since I'm not sure, I'll probably order couple of samples and all because it's I mean of course I also look on sites like Pinterest etc but for me it's more important that I can see it in, in real life I didn't do a lot of physical work last week but I made a lot of rounds with my van to pick up materials for the electricity so we are actually wired up here we have three apartments fully wired with electricity and i had to pick up boxes built-in boxes led transformers led drivers pulse switches changeover switches series switches light switches sockets service mounted boxes earth leakage circuit breakers thermostats current limiters and other circuit breakers but we are wired up three apartments imagine that done and if you look if I look at it now I'm like wow so yeah one of my main goals was always to do it right 
and do it right. Why? Because now I know that the rest of my life I don't have to worry about electricity, water, heating. Everything is up to the newest standards. I have, uh, I, when I put in the conduit, I actually put in some extra here, there, wherever I thought that maybe one day I was going to change the light or whatever. So I have enough in each apartment for the future. And uh, it's only now that I start to realize that actually I'm building an apartment building, you know. There's so much material going into it. For the four apartments, we have about 120 switches and power sockets, four thermostats, four emergency lights. Every apartment has its own central area for electricity. And then that is going to be brought to the other central area and it will have a kill switch. And I plan to, to put in some um, meters so I can calculate and uh, in the in the probably the next two years what the energy consumption is going to be because my dream eventually is to go off grid but to have an apartment building and go off grid that is really another story it's not like a small cabin or a small house you just put some solar panels and you can buy some lithium batteries and you can probably go off grid so first i need to have an idea how uh, how uh, how much energy is being used especially at peak periods and then maybe in two years from today i can start to calculate a little bit how much solar energy i need how many batteries i have to install i'm also looking into instead of having solar panels there's um, a lot of development with solar tiles so you instead of having a new roof tiled you can have these built-in solar panels lots of thinking went into it in the end because uh, you know you need to know about your bathrooms you need to know about your kitchens which appliances you're going to put in the kitchen to have all that electricity in place and still have a, uh, the possibility to maybe add something in the future. So the third apartment upstairs, also completely wired. Look, that external wire, it's really nice like that. Or so I think. I think it's awesome, you know. Kitchen. Lights, power sockets, central, generale. But you switch it on, off. I have a kill switch in the bottom. I have all kind of hotel switches. So you can switch on the light here, switch it off somewhere else. Uh, of course, once it's done and the lights go on, that's when you may realize that somewhere you made a mistake or maybe it's not so handy to have uh, the switch there, uh, I hope not. So one is for the bathroom, one is to switch off the light inside, one is to switch off on and off the light inside, but then you get inside, one is to switch Behind the bed for the LED strip, there is the switch for the spots, there is a switch for the main light, there is a ventilator too. These are things that, uh, you know, maybe sometimes in the video they are not very clear, but I can, I can promise you that. I spent so many days and nights trying to figure out where you want to have lights, how the switches have to work. What are the walking paths inside an apartment? Which areas do you keep open? Because I, I, I think that is one thing that is really important. You know, if you open the door, you come inside. For example, that is the walkway to the bedroom and to the bathroom. So this area has to be clean. And that means um, that you don't want to maybe put a radiator there, but I made it on this side. You have to be able to come in, switch on the light here, you have to switch it off when you go to, the, to your bed. And all these things, uh, yeah, 
they are um, that kind of design that took so much time, so much time. So um, I can only hope that um, didn't really make a mistake. I did get some advice, of course, too, but still, we'll see. Uh, this kitchen block, I have the right sizes here. Still have 64 here. That's going to be a fridge. The rest of that is going to be the kitchen. The only thing I'm still struggling with is where I'm going to put the, the wooden stove. First I thought to have it a little bit more there, but I also want to fit in a couch, table, chairs, four chairs. So maybe that hole that I made there, close it and make a new one. Now in this apartment I have an extra connection for a radiator in that corner in case this one which is going to be a massive one is not enough mm. it's really nice yeah, i think january is going to be a very good month it's a great start of the year everything in place Uh, that I need to re redo that. Yeah, I don't Personally, I'm not very fond of drywall either, but hey uh, I have to keep things a little bit lightweight upstairs So I used a lot of wood and some drywall, but usually uh, uh, Most of the walls are made from wood and the drywall is just to plaster and to be able to tile Because uh, you can tile on a, on a wooden surface we have all the uh, LED strips in the top. I can't wait to see the lights go on one day. But we're still far from that, far from that. All right, well, that's all connected. So yeah. So the only thing that I still need to do Check all the corners, if there is any pointing left to do, there is some pointing upstairs, I have to fix that hole, put it there. It's a small job, but it can take hours before it's done. And you see in that corner, I have to put some mud antica to close it there too. And then I have to get everything out again, you know, that is... Uh, frustrating at times that you don't really have one place where you can keep everything it needs to go out so i can have the floor done because i did get my call and they're going to come tuesday or wednesday so this weekend i will be cleaning out everything and, uh, well it's cold so this is going to be the bed i have a two meter net strip to illuminate the wall and the ceiling, the bed switch, uh, light for, to read. You can of course switch off the main lights. I have like a spot that I plan to put on top of the beam. I actually made a hole through the beam. And I'm gonna have some light coming down from here because this is the side from the bed. You look outside. And somewhere here I'm gonna have a seating area with a table and a nice light maybe with those light LED light bulbs. Yeah, of course, when the floor is in, I can start tiling. Because, uh, like, start with the, the bottom, and then the, the showers uh, upstairs, they're all um, with tiles. In fact, I have the same tiles that I will put in the bathroom. I picked the tile, which you can also order in mosaic and the showers uh yeah the floor you have to do it uh by hand uh, you need to to have a little bit of a slope maybe one two millimeters so the water can run so 
I'm going to have a meeting with my plumber. In the end, you need all the certificates, so you need to work with a certified plumber. Now you can put everything yourself, but he has to make the connections. Still a couple of things about water. Because I'm going to have some water in the terrace. I, I have another tap outside. I need to water inside, below the panorama terrace. Then we did fit in the tube for the water to go inside the garage and all the way to the swimming pool, but I still need to put the water inside to connect to the pump. And then for the other house, because I need to open the wall and find, find out where the water runs. All right. And then I have to plan two or three days with appointments and get some offers for kitchens. I'll get some different offers for the next couple of days, maybe next week. That's the first part of the order for the floor. And today it's dry, so uh, it's very important to uh, check out when something can be delivered. You see, the soil here, when it uh, gets wet, it's like uh, mud almost. And you can't enter anymore. You cannot uh, come up uh, from this side. So I just called, uh, this morning I called the guy from the wood chips because I want them delivered somewhere right there. It's just that now it's not a good time. So maybe next week. Most important thing is that he keeps uh, about a thousand kilos apart for me because I have to do all the, I'm going to use all the wood chips to do all the parts. I want, uh, I want to keep it a little bit natural. So to keep it natural, below the wood chips I'm going to put some cardboard. So I'm saving all the cardboard right here. This is actually what is so important when you buy an old stone house. Do you have a good access road? Because if not, you're gonna have a real, real big problems getting all your materials here. And of course you can buy yourself a van and try it yourself, but those are things that are really not worth it if you ask me. Should be enough. Now it may not always seem like that, but I am pretty well organized. I bought all the tiles, but I have to, since I did the apartment upstairs, I want to uh, grout all the bathrooms and the kitchens with a color similar to the tiles. So what we have, basically every apartment is going to have its own color. I'm not sure if I can display it somewhere, maybe here. So every apartment has its own color. That's going to be the middle apartment, combination of gray with this pink old pink and the only thing I still have to decide is whether the front apartment upstairs is going to be blue or green I was thinking blue upstairs green downstairs color for the apartment that is now the workspace and then they didn't have other colors that I liked so for the studio apartment I have this one and for the bathroom external bathroom I have that one and we'll combine it with a gray floor, 50 by 50, and the rest is gonna be 60 by 30, oxide white, it's a little bit of a dirty white. I think we'll make a nice combination. I now have to 
organize a little bit the colors together and go over my order because something's changed while building and constructing the apartment some some sizes changed some dimensions and i have to see if i have the the right number that's uh downstairs the shower i have to fit in that is for the showers upstairs yeah mm. Imagine, that could be a nice question. How much electrical wire goes into this place when everything is said and done? I thought nine kilometers, but I made a recalculation based on the wiring from the first three apartments upstairs. The conduit I laid down for the apartment downstairs. This one is still to go. Then we have the terraces. We have to go to the pool, which is another six millimeters. So just upstairs we have six kilometers of wire divided by three that's two kilometers so I initial calculation was three and a half so I'm like three, one and a half four and a half kilometers off <laughs> that's a lot ay, 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 ay. Upstairs is going to be blue and the one downstairs is going to be green. Hmm. I get myself some supplies too. So probably from the middle of January, a little bit forward, I can start tiling. With the floors done. Ah yeah, this was a change. Damn. 